Okay, so I thought we would go over the answers to these five EKGs I sent out to you. So we're going to go through them fairly quickly. You can pause this and watch it over if you need to, or review the relevant concepts on the, the website. So let's go. So let's start with the rate, and the rate is, uh, you know, I like to find one of these that fall on a line, and so here's a QRS that falls on a line, so we say th we'll do um, 300, 150, 175. So somewhere in between the two, I'd say it's closer to 100 than it is to 75, so I'm going to say 90. Now let's do rhythm, and so we want to see that there's a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P, so I like to label them. And this one is a little bit confusing because the T and the P are so close to each other. But here you can see there's a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P. So then I would call this a sinus rhythm. Okay. Next, let's look at axis. And we could see that 1 is mostly positive and that F is also mostly positive. So we're in this quadrant, so we've got a normal axis. So now we're going to do the intervals. Okay, we'll look at these leads here. And so first the PR, so we know that's the P, and that's the R there. So I think that's about one box, so I'm going to say that's 200 milliseconds, so that's normal. Then we'll look at the QRS. It's hard to, there are no small boxes on this picture, but it looks like it's about two, two and a half small boxes, so I'd say about 100 milliseconds, so I would say that is normal. And then finally, let's look at the QRS. So let's draw a big line through here, a big line through here, a dotted line down the middle, and you could see that the T wave is to the right of this line, so the QTC is prolonged. Now, let's look at the ST segments. So, let's first go with our uh, high lateral leads. So, the high lateral leads are like 1 and AVL, and those ST segments and those T waves look great. Let's look now at the inferior leads. And so our inferior leads are 2, 3, and F. And those also, the ST segments and the T waves, look normal. The T waves are upright and the ST segments are flat. Let's look at the other lateral leads. I'm sorry, we should have done that with the, with the, the first set of lateral leads. And so we can say V5, V6 are lateral leads here. And those also look fine. Okay, let's look at the septal leads. So the septal leads are like 1 and 2. And those look fine. And then let's look at the anterior leads. And so that's like this. And those also look like fine. So our ST segments and our T waves look good. So now let's figure out what exactly is going on here. We said the rate was about 90. We said it was sinus. We said the axis was normal. We said the PR was normal. The QRS was normal. The QTC was prolonged, right? That's what we said. ST segments were normal, T waves were normal. So our diagnosis is a prolonged QTC, and so you're going to need to check some electrolytes and correct those, make sure there's not any drugs that are going to increase the QTC. We worry that uh, this person could go into torsade otherwise, right? Okay, next. Let's go to the next EKG now. Okay, let's start with the rate, and we're going to do it the other way. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... On this uh, EKG, so there's 7 times 6 is 42, so we'll say the rate is 42. The rhythm, let's zoom into this section over here and label everything. And you can see that there's not one P for every QRS and one QRS for every P. In fact, they seem to be doing their own thing. The Qs seem to be marching out at a nice, steady, regular rhythm, and the Ps seem to be marching out at a nice, steady, regular rhythm. So they're not cut, they're not uh, talking. They're each doing their own thing, each beating to the beat of their own drummer. And so we call that a complete heart block, third degree AV block. So now let's move to axis. And one is definitely mostly positive. F is also mostly positive. So we're in this quadrant. So we'll say it's a normal axis. Let's move over here now and do our intervals. And it's a little bit Hard, you can't really do the PR interval because the P and the QRS are not related, so though that we will skip. Let's look at the QRS, and that looks like it's pretty narrow. It looks like it's about two small boxes, so we'll say normal QRS. And then let's do our T waves, All right? So let's do that, bisect it, and say, well, our T wave is right there. Our QT is also normal. 
So now let's do our ST segments and our T waves. First, we'll look at the high lateral leads. The T waves and the ST segments there look good. Let's look at these lateral leads at the same time, and those also look good. Then we look at the inferior leads, which are right here, and those, the T waves and the ST segments, look fine. Then we'll look at the septal leads here. Those look fine. And finally, we look at the um, anterior leads, which also look fine. And so now, let's uh, go through. We said our rate, I believe, was about 42. Our rhythm, we said, was a third degree AV block. Our axis was normal. Our PR number, we could not calculate. So we usually put a star on it when the machine does it because we can't calculate it. The QRS, we said, was normal. And the QTC, we said, was normal. ST segments, normal. T waves, normal. And so our diagnosis was a third degree AV block. And our plan is this guy is going to need a pacemaker. So now let's move on to the next EKG. So this one's obviously going fast. Can we say how fast? Sure, let's zoom in on a section over here. And then let's just see what's going on. So we know this is 300, 150. So it's between 300 and 150, closer to the 150. So let's call the rate 160. So now let's look at the rhythm. And I don't see P waves anywhere. It's all just Q, RSs, and Ts. So wherever this rhythm is, it's not generating an atrial depolarization. So it's probably not coming from the SA node. And this fast tachycardia of about 150, 160 without the T waves is, oh, I'm sorry, without the P waves is usually going to be an SVT, a supraventricular tachycardia. We know that because the QRS is narrow, so that means it, the depolarization is, is going through the bundle fibers, uh, and, and it's not generated in the ventricle somewhere. So we're going to call this rhythm SVT. Now let's look at the axis. Okay. So 1 is mostly positive, so we're over here. Uh, F, you know what? It looks like it's mostly negative, so let's uh, put it that way. And so now we need to look at lead 2. And so in lead 2, we got about 1, 2, 2 and a half boxes positive, and 1, 2 boxes negative. So it's a little bit more positive than it is negative. So we're on this side of the line. So we know that we're in this area. It means we know we have normal axis. So now let's do our intervals. And there is no P again, so we can't do a PR. The QRS is pretty narrow, you can see in both of these leads. So I think it's less, I think it's about two small boxes, maybe two and a half small boxes, so that's good. And then let's do the QTC. Uh, so we'll do a line through there and a dotted line in the middle. And it's pretty close to the middle, but uh, I think it's on the, the good side when we do the bisection. So I think the QTC is also normal. So those are, our, those are our intervals. And so next, let's do our uh, ST segments and T waves. So we start with our high lateral leads. The T waves are upright. The ST segments are flat. Let's do these lateral leads. Same thing. Now we go to the inferior leads here. The T waves are upright. The ST segments are about flat. I think those look fine. Then we can look at our septal leads over here. Again, these T waves look flat. Ah, maybe this one's maybe inverted, but that one is fine. V1 may be inverted, but V2 looks fine. And then finally, let's do our anterior leads. And again, I think those look good. The T waves are a little big, but I think they're fine. And so what do we got here? So we said that our rate was about 160. We said our rhythm was SVT. Our axis, I believe we said, was normal. PR, we couldn't do. QRS was normal, and QTC was normal. Our ST segments were normal, and this was normal. Our diagnosis, then, is going to be SVT. So what is our plan? So we need to know a little bit more about the patient. And we do know something about the patient. We know that he is hypotensive, and he is confused. So he is symptomatic from this. So this guy needs cardioversion. Not defibrillation, but cardioversion. And it hurts like crazy, so give him some pain medicine, maybe fentanyl or something to take the edge off it, because it feels like getting hit in the chest with a baseball bat. So this one was SVT. Let's go to the next one. Okay, let's start with the rate again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I'd say the rate is 66. The rhythm 
there seems to be a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P. So let's call this sinus. And now let's do axis. And so 1 is mostly positive, so we'll go there. F, I think, is mostly negative, so let's go there. So now we look at lead 2. And 2 looks more positive than it is negative, so we're on this side of the line, right? We know we're on this side, positive 2, so we're in this area. So we got normal axis. So now let's do our intervals, right? And so we can say the PR is, I would say, about four small boxes. And so that's about 160 milliseconds, and that is normal for the PR. The QRS, let's say that's about, I don't know, two or three. So let's say that's about 120 to, 100 to 120 milliseconds. And finally, let's do our QTC. And so let's draw a big, thick line through there, a big, thick line through there, a dotted line in the middle. Our T wave is right here. So our T wave is on the correct side of the bisection. So we'll say our QTC is normal. Okay, now we're going to do our ST segments. And so let's look first at our high lateral leads. And the thing that we're going to notice is that the T waves are inverted. And especially in this one, ADL, you can see that there's a little bit of ST depression. Okay, and let's look at these lateral leads. Now these are not high lateral ones, but they are lateral. And we can say that maybe... Maybe the ST segment is a little high here. It's starting to look like that. And maybe over here, too, it's looking a little bit flat. It's lost that concavity. Let's look at the next set, then. Okay, so we're going to look at our inferior leads here. And those definitely have some ST segment elevation there, right? It's obvious there in 3 and in F and even in 2. Okay, good. Let's go next to the uh, anterior leads. I mean, the septal leads, right? Septally, there's some ST depressions and some T wave uh, inversions there as well. And finally, let's go to these anterior leads. Wrong color. Let me fix that. Let's make it orange. Uh, and you could see that uh, they're about flat. The T waves are starting to flip a little bit. So let's put this all together now. We know that we have some inferior ST elevations. What's the opposite of inferior? Superior. Well, we have something that's a high lead, right? And what's the opposite of ST depression, ST, or ST elevation, ST depression. So this is a reciprocal change here in L. The opposite of this inferior ST elevation is a high ST depression. And so we know we have an inferior MI going on, and maybe a little bit of lateral extension, look, because it's, it's getting up over here as well. So what's going on here? Let's figure this out. I think we said our rate was 66. Sorry, 66. Our rhythm was sinus. Our axis, I believe, was normal. PR was normal. QRS was normal. QT corrected was normal. ST segments, we have inferior and maybe even some lateral ST elevations. T waves, uh, they were a little bit big, maybe hyperacute. So our diagnosis for this person, at the very least, is an inferior STEMI, right? And what is the plan for this person? It's the cath lab. So even though this patient actually was not even complaining of chest pain, just weak and dizzy, but you know, a 74-year-old diabetic woman, they can have very subtle symptoms. So we have an inferior MI with a little bit of lateralness there. So, and, so inferior STEMI, cath lab. Okay, let's look at that final EKG. Okay, let's go quick. Let's start with rate, and we'll move down here. And so we said 300, 150, 175, 60. So I'd say it's about 60. So now let's do our rhythm. The P's are a little bit hard to see in some of the leads, right? Like here you can't see them at all. But if you, that's why you always look in every lead. And then you can hopefully find, like, I think that's a P here. That's a P. Uh, that's a P. That's a P. They're really close to the QRS. But I think there is a P for every QRS and a Q for every P. So I'm still going to call this one sinus. But something's going on here, right? So we're going to come back to that. Let's do axis next, okay? And so 1, mostly positive. F, mostly positive. We're in this area. Normal axis. Okay, let's do our intervals. And on this one, it's a little bit tricky, so we're going to go through this here. So where is the P wave? I think that this here is the P wave, okay? And so let's go up, 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 up. So I think that's the P wave over there. So where does the QRS start? Well, I think it starts like right there. So let's go down and see where that is here. Wow, it starts like right there, okay? 
And so remember that each lead shows the exact same thing, but just from a different perspective. So if you can't find the P wave in one lead, like say in this one, then you look here and you can find it there. If you can't find the QR, where the QR starts in another lead, then you, um, you can see it here and bring it down here and say, oh, there it is, okay? Now that said, that is a really small PR. I would say that's like 80 milliseconds. And remember, PR is one of those, the, the only one that seems to have a lower limit is 120 to 200 milliseconds. So we have a short, a short PR. Okay, let's look next at the QRS. And the QRS is, uh, I would say it's about three boxes. So I'm going to say 120 milliseconds. And finally, let's do our bisection method to look at the QTC. Okay, our bisection method, look at the QTC, and there is the T wave. And so that's on the good side, so I would say we have a normal, normal QTC. So what does that short PR mean, really? Well, what does the PR usually represent? It represents that delay in the AV node. So there's a delay there, it's built in, but because it's too short, we can say that there is no delay. So that means that there somehow conduction is getting around this uh, AV node, and so what it probably has found is an alternate pathway to get through. And so what is that usually going to be? It's going to be WPW, and what do we see with WPW? We see delta waves, so now let's go see if we can find those delta waves. And so, uh, you know, if you missed them before, now your hint to go look for them was the uh, short PR. Look, there's a delta wave, there's a delta wave, there's a delta wave, there's a delta, they are there. So this is going to be W. W. Okay, let's finish up. Uh, and so next we need to do our ST segments and our T waves. So first let's look at the lateral leads. You know what? They look fine. The T waves are a little bit flat here. The T waves are flat and they're actually inverted here. Okay, let's look at these lateral leads. A um, little biphasic here, but otherwise looks good. Let's go to the next set. We're going to look at the inferior leads now. And so let's look here. Uh, looks pretty fine. You might say, okay, does this look a little elevated? I don't know. And you look here, I don't know. I think it's going to be J point elevation. You can see that little bump. Let me zoom in there. There's that little bump over there uh, that comes up first. And the other hint, though it's not 100%, this, this is a 15 or 17 year old kid, so probably not that. Let's go to the next set of leads and we're going to do our. Um, and our septal leads, ST segment, T waves look maybe a little biphasic, a little flat, flat, uh, or flipped over here. And finally, our anterior leads, and those look fine. Okay, what do we got going on here? Okay, so the rate, I believe we said, was 60. The rhythm was sinus rhythm. The axis was normal. The PR was short. We said 80 milliseconds. In fact, we said this is WPW. QRS, we said was normal. QT corrective was normal. These were normal. There were some non-specific T wave abnormalities, right? There was nothing that was really uh, geographically or anatomically uh, going on there. And so our diagnosis was WPW. So if this kid is symptomatic, and I believe he was coming in with palpitations, he probably go, should go see PEDS cardiology. And maybe he needs an ablation. So that was our last EKG here. And so it was WPW. All right, I hope that helped. Please make sure that you do, do these on your own first before you uh, watch this video. Because that's where the real learning will happen. Okay, thank you very much and bye-bye.